So in this short video, we're going to have a look at the pupillary light reflex. So this is the reflexive action of the pupils constricting in response to a light stimulus. Now there's two parts to the pupillary light reflex. The first is what we call the direct pupillary light reflex. And this is where we see a light stimulus directed onto one eye and that uh, same eye or the pupil constricts in response to that. And this is known as the direct pupillary light reflex. But what we also see is that even if we direct the light into the right pupil, so let's label this uh, the right eye, and this the right eye, what we also see is the opposite eye, so the eye that we didn't actually shine light into, also constricting. And this is known as the um, consensual light reflex. So when we shine a, a, a light or a pen torch into a pupil's eye, we do it one eye at a time, and we are not only looking at what happens to the pupil in the eye that we shone the light into, we're also looking at the opposite eye to see that that constricts as well. So these are the direct and consensual light reflexes. And they can tell us a lot of information about um, the nerves that um, are responsible for one um, detecting light, so that's our optic nerve, but also the nerves that then carry that signal or the efferent signal um, to the, um, the, the muscle of the iris, which then constricts the pupil. So there are two arms to this light reflex and we'll call them the afferent which is the sensory uh, part of the reflex, reflex and the efferent which is the the output or the the motor arm of this reflex so the the afferent will um, carry the uh, the signal in it will uh, detect the um, the light stimulus and it relays that information to uh, to the brainstem where that will communicate with uh, a number of um, uh, other cells to ultimately send a signal out um, in a motor nerve to uh, the muscle of the iris for it to contract. So that's our uh, efferent signal out. And there's two cranial nerves um, responsible for this pupillary light reflex. The one that senses the, the light stimulus is our optic nerve. That's our cranial nerve too. The sensory signal detected by the photoreceptors in the retina of the eye will relay the stimulus to the brainstem and the motor or efferent signal um, is relayed on um, essentially the parasympathetic fibres associated with the ocular motor nerve, or cranial nerve 3. So remember this is a reflex, it's not under conscious control, it just happens without us even realising or thinking about it. So it's the parasympathetic fibres um, or the autonomic fibres that um, are associated with the um, ocular motor nerve that's responsible for this um, contraction of muscle in, in the iris to constrict the pupil. Now given that we've already highlighted that by stimulating one eye you actually get uh, a response in both pupils, that suggests that perhaps at the level of the brainstem, when this signal comes in from one eye, that actually the information is relayed to the motor um, output um, of the ocular motor nerve to both pupils. So we see not just a connection between the right eye, for example, and the um, motor output to the right eye, but we also see a connection to um, the motor or efferent um, output to the opposite eye as well. So let's take this just a little bit further and uh, have a look at um, exactly uh, what happens here uh, for this uh, pupillary light reflex to occur. So if we have a look at this image here, what we're doing is we're looking um, down through the top of someone's head. So we're looking right down onto uh, the top of the eyes. And this allows us to appreciate um, the important elements of this uh, pupillary light reflex. 
So just to orientate you to what the structures are that we see here, so obviously we've got um, our left and our right eye, so we'll, um, we'll label them as such. So this is our left and our right eye. The um, red area here just denotes the photosensitive part of the retina, you can see here. Uh, here we have the optic nerves, which are running, um, carrying that um, signal from light stimulus uh, back towards um, the, the brain. So here would be the optic chiasm, and these would be our optic tracks. Now what we have in the middle here, um, and it lies um, obviously um, inferiorly or, or caudally to the forebrain, is an area of the midbrain. So the midbrain is the uh, very uh, top end of our brainstem. And it's within the midbrain that we have uh, important connections between the afferent, or the sensory signal uh, that's coming through the optic nerve, uh, that communicates with a number of nuclei that sit within uh, this area of the brainstem. And it is then from here that a signal is relayed to the iris of the pupil. So obviously the dark bit here is the pupil and the, uh, the, the lighter white rim is the, is the iris. So let's imagine we uh, shine a light into the left pupil. So that signal is uh, sensed by the uh, retina, uh, so specific photoreceptors within this red retinal layer. And that signal is sent through the optic nerve. And while obviously a lot of sensory information is then ultimately relayed back through the um, optic tracks to our occipital lobe for interpretation and obviously some crossover at the level of the um, of the chiasm just here but we'll ignore that for the moment and just think about what happens to the light stimulus um, and that message from uh, the retina uh, in terms of its um, relationship with the with the midbrain so the sensory afferents will run into um, the brainstem let's draw that here and they connect with um, a nucleus um, in the brainstem known as the pretectal nucleus. Now from the pretectal nucleus, we have a communication with the Edinger-Westphal nucleus, which is here. And it's from here that um, we see the efferent or the parasympathetic motor response to that light stimulus being sent out towards the uh, sphincter muscle, sphincter pupillae muscle of the iris. So if we draw that on, here's the cell body of the uh, parasympathetic nerve, we'll just do it in blue, and it exits the midbrain, um, it will pass through a parasympathetic ganglion known as the ciliary ganglion, where it synapses onto a second uh, postganglionic parasympathetic, which ultimately reaches the, um, the muscle of the, of the iris. So this structure here is our ciliary ganglion. And that's found within the, um, the orbit of the eye. So this sort of dashed line here just denotes the uh, sort of the, 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 the back of the orbit, really. Um, so in addition to the parasympathetic uh, or the motor signal uh, being relayed to the muscle of the left pupil, we also have communication from the pretectal nucleus in the midbrain here to the parasympathetic nucleus on the opposite side. So the Edinger-Westphal nucleus in relation to the right eye. And we see then from this nucleus, the parasympathetic output to the right iris, just here. So even though we stimulated the left eye, and that signal was sent to um, nuclei in the midbrain, the brainstem on the same side, we also have a communication with the um, parasympathetic nucleus of the, of the opposite side, the Edinger-Westphal nucleus of the opposite side. And that's why we not only get our uh, direct pupillary response, but we also then see a consensual pupillary uh, response as well. So in uh, reaction to a single light stimulus to one eye, we see both pupils constricting uh, simultaneously. And just to finish this um, uh, sort of picture, or fill in the, the, the sort of final last detail, 
is that these uh, parasympathetic um, nerve fibres um, run with the ocular motor nerve. So they hitchhike onto the ocular motor nerve. So the efferent arm of the light reflex, both the um, consensual and the, uh, sorry, the consensual being this side, and the direct um, are carried on the um, ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve 3. So the parasympathetics that are, are carried with that. Uh, and that essentially um, covers our pupillary light reflex and why we get a direct and a consensual reflex uh, in response to a stimulus in just one eye.